Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about time estimation. I have received a lot of requests over the last year for people asking for a good method to estimate tasks because this is a frequent contentious point between people and either the people they manage or their managers where time estimates are just off and then upset situations happen. I'm going to talk about what I consider to be a good way of making estimates and problems of over and underestimating. Now, a lot of people have asked. The most recent request was from Egan Targaryen1390, who asked, can you please do a video on time estimate estimations and planning and how to handle situations where the boss says it needs to be done in X days and you say it will take three X days? Okay. One reason I put off answering this question for a long time is it's very, very complicated. Um, I remember when I first started in engineering school, this was in the 80s, a long time ago. In my first software engineering class, they talked about uh, time to estimate writing code. And this had been something that had been a problem for decades already. IBM used to have issues with estimating programming tasks. And back then, there, there wasn't a whole lot of research into this. And also, there wasn't a whole lot of history of programming. And languages were being developed. Hardware was being developed. Everything was in a state of flux. The only thing I really remember from that class is there was a model called Kokomo, which the input was how many lines of code had to be written. And the output was an estimate in man months, which right then should tell you a lot <laughs> of what era it was. But what was interesting, even then, a lot of people, including me, had questions to the professor like, wait a minute, it only took number of lines of code? How did you estimate that? How did you come up with the estimate of lines of code? Uh, it doesn't take into account the type of code being written? Because as I can tell you right now, it takes me a lot longer to write 100 lines of UI code than 100 lines of gameplay system mechanic code. What about the the experience of the programmer? Are you telling me a junior programmer writes 100 lines in the same amount of time as a senior programmer? Or maybe if they write the same amount of code, does, are you telling me there are just as many bugs in both and they're both equally efficient? There are a lot of problems with this. So I just want to remind everybody, this is a very complicated question. And it's different for programming and art and design and sound and literally any task you're going to do. I'm going to approach it a little more from the programming side because that's what I have the most experience doing. Let me also point out that this question is highly, highly, highly correlated with crunch because like crunch, people tend to put the entire onus of the problem on one group saying either the estimator is horrible or their manager is horrible for even asking for an estimate. And we're talking about that. So, and of course, if you've watched my channel for even just a week, you know that I'm gonna give pros and cons and think that issues exist on both sides of that fence. I don't think you can point the finger at anyone and go, 100% of the blame is on this role. So, let me jump to early in my career. When when I was first starting out, so this is this is me talking to all you junior programmers out there. I was usually given an estimate. So somebody would tell me, usually a senior programmer or somebody who was responsible for the project and the code would give me an estimate and go, hey, I need you to do this. Here's how it works. I think it should take you a week. What I learned as a junior programmer was to ask questions. The first thing I'd ask is, why is the estimate a week? Can you tell me why you think it's a week? Normally they'd say, well, I've done this before. Um, it took me a week and I would all frequently say, could I get a breakdown by day? And the advantage for that is if they break it down by day, it not only is, is broken down into a much more constructive, understandable tasks, but you also know immediately if you're going off, off estimation. If at the end of the first day, you haven't finished the first day's tasks, you're probably not going to finish this in a week. Big tasks... Um, that I would say if you're given a task that's a week or even I've been given tasks for that are a month or three months. Try to get those broken down 
into daily and sometimes even hourly. Sometimes things can be broken down into hourly. Like here's something shouldn't take you more than two hours. And that way, you know, if it took you all day to do that, something's wrong. It could be something's wrong with you. You didn't understand the task. You're just not very um, experienced or the language do doesn't have support uh, cause that you're used to. You didn't know these library functions existed. Maybe it's on the manager. Maybe they were mistaking it. Maybe they were thinking of another task. So you try to figure that out. Um, the nice thing about this, about breaking it down into smaller tasks, like I mentioned, is if things go off and I mentioned going, you know, you're, you're taking too much time, but even if you take too little time, this is something you get to know soon. And before a lot of time is spent and yes, it's good to know if somebody tells you this should take all day and you get it done in an hour, you need to communicate that because something happened here. Either they misestimated the task or maybe you didn't do the right thing. Maybe they thought you were going to write the final function and have a lot more support and a lot more error checking and have it be efficient. And you just did the most basic task ever and it's really slow and it doesn't check any of its parameters for errors. So communication is a huge thing. Let me give you an example of the, one of the very first things I did. It was in the second game I ever made, Bard's Tale Construction Set. I was given that, and I was told it would take 14 weeks to do the entire thing. Now, this is only the second game I'd ever done. And so even though I was the, quote, lead programmer, I still felt very inexperienced. I'd done one game before, and it was a bridge card game. So I tried to ask questions about, hey, why, why do you think it would only take 14 weeks? And one of the responses I was given was, well, most of the effort is going to be in combat. And combat, you can pull out of one of the previous games because they're effectively a black box. Let me tell you what I discovered. Two things wrong with what I was told. One, it wasn't a lot of time spent in combat. A big chunk of the time was spent in, you guessed it, UI. And as a subset of that, we had animating animating creatures in the UI. And I didn't know how to do that. I barely knew how the graphics mode worked. Putting, make, putting Delta compressed animation frames and rendering them at a particular frame rate was outside my skill set. Also, I, the first thing I did when I got home from that meeting, because I was a contractor, I was working at home, I dove into combat and I discovered it was not a black box. The combat code was filled with things like if monster equals dragon, then. Actually, what it said was if dra if monster type equals 52. And I had to go figure out what 52 meant. They didn't even bother using enums. It was a little bit of a nightmare code. Um, I talk about this in the Bard's Tale Construction Set video I have. Anyway, so I was back a day or two later going, this is not what you said it was. And luckily, because I could back it up, I go, you said it was a black box? This, look at this code. Look at this code. Look at this function. This is not a black box. And also, I pointed out some things like, you want some things done that are outside my skill set. They did get an extra programmer put in. Uh, Phil Britt came on board to handle a lot of that animation stuff. Um, some of the estimates were changed. So, communication. Now, later in your career, when you're uh, a more experienced programmer, let's say you're a senior programmer, you're not a lead yet, you're a senior programmer, you're the one who's asked to give estimates. You're given a task and said, hey, how long do you think this is going to take to do? Here's what my, I recommend you do. And by the way, it's totally fair. You're an experienced programmer. You're a senior. It is absolutely fair to ask you to estimate things. The first thing I do is compare the task you've been asked to do to ones you've done before. If you've done ones like that before, then base your estimate on those previous tasks, because now you know how long it took you to do these things. If you haven't done tasks like this before, you're back to your manager and going, I've never done anything like this before. Why do you think it will take this long? Why don't we break it down? Why don't we break them down into hourly or daily tasks? And I'll start on it and I'll get back to you after the first day and tell you how things are going. There should be absolutely no reason they shouldn't accept that. Now, keep in mind that and part of a manager's job is to push back on you and try to get the most accurate estimate possible. A lot of you get angry when managers do that, as if you don't understand that's their job. They were trying to schedule a project. There isn't an infinite flow of money. There isn't an infinite number of people who can come into the project and rescue things that are getting behind. So things have to be estimated. That's just the world. So... It's always possible to give estimates, but it isn't always possible to give an accurate one. 
but you have to try. And the reason for this is, unless you're an indie, the money's coming from somewhere, those people wanna know, and they have a right to know. They're funding this project. They're paying you. Saying you can't give an estimate and how dare they ask you is a little bit, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't wanna work with somebody like that. It's basically saying, hey, I know better than you about running a project. And my idea of running a project is just see to the pants and we'll see what happens. That's not going to be a very good project. So the problem is I want to talk too about the separate issues of what happens when you underestimate and what happens when you overestimate. So let's say you're given a task and you underestimate how long it will, will take. Basically, you're going to run out of time. There are three things that I've seen this lead to. One, you go to people, you, 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 you have to go to your manager and go, look, I'm not going to have this feature done. So they may have to yank the feature out of the game. Um, this is why as a designer, I said I've often had design uh, fallbacks as part of my design doc to try to account for this. But if it happens too much, the game is going to become significantly worse. You're going to ship a game where people who are playing the game, they don't know anything about the process. They're just going to go, I can't believe they don't have sorting in the inventory. I can't believe they don't have tagging inventory items for selling them. I can't believe they don't have junk items in their own category. If you ran out of time doing that inventory UI, that's why it's like that. Remember I said the answer to everything is money. Another thing that when you run out of time is you may have finished it, but you didn't have really a chance to look at it, bugs. So basically the work for that task, which should have been done when you created it, would you just kick the can down the road, as one of my producers like to say, and now there's bugs. You, you turn it in and go, it's done, it's, it's working, but you really have no idea how stable it is or if it's causing the frame rate to drop. Basically, QA is going to find bugs associated or that lead directly back to the code you just wrote. And then, of course, the third big bugaboo here is crunch. You underestimating a task is going to cause crunch later. If it's a feature that cannot be removed, if even if it doesn't lead to bugs, but it, you need to finish it, you or someone else is going to have to do that work. This is going to cause crunch. Either the game is going to run over time or you're going to work over time. Something is going to happen because of you underestimating how long it would take to do that. Now, so that this leads to an interesting thing where a lot of people go, I'm going to be clever and I'm going to overestimate it. So if I think it's going to take a week, I'm going to say four weeks. Um, I call this the the Star Trek Scotty method where he always used to tell Captain Kirk, you want that done in an hour? I can't, I can't do it. I, I can't do accents. And then he does it in 10 minutes. Well, this sounds clever and you you may be patting yourself on the back going, yeah, I'm always getting stuff done faster. But it leads to two things. One, if you give a big estimate for something, uh, they may not even ask you to do it. They may just drop the feature. They may just go to a fallback because you said it would take too long. This has happened on my games where I asked for a feature as a designer. I got a really big estimate back. I thought it was wrong, but I'm like, I'm not going to push back on that because I've pushed back in the past and been told I'm a bad manager. So I just dropped the feature and went to one of my fallbacks. Game shipped. People were like, why doesn't why this feature exist? Then, later on, I've had a program go, oh, guys, we figured out we could have done that. <sighs> okay, too late. Feature got dropped. Players were disappointed. That's because you overestimated a task. But here's another thing that can happen. Let's say a task is assigned to you and you come back and go, yeah, you said it's going to take a week. It's really going to take me four weeks. There's a chance your manager will go, okay, don't do that. And they give you other tasks to do instead. And you think it's being dropped? Instead, the task is given to another developer. And let's say they do it in a week. And they're the same level as you. Like you're both juniors or you're both seniors. Well, guess what? You just got revealed as being someone who pads their estimates. And that is not a good look for you. You may think, well, I was just being cautious. Yeah, but you almost cost us a feature. Because you were just, you thought it was clever to quadruple all your time estimates. Both of these things, you being the reason features are dropped or you being the reason or you being discovered as someone who's padding their estimates that other people can do much faster than you, these are not good for you because they lead to a reputation um, that either you work on games that don't review well or you're just a bad game developer. 
trust me, you work on enough games, your reputation will build. And both of these things will come back to you. And I see a lot of people are like, no, it wasn't my fault. It was something else. I didn't, they didn't explain it to me right. That's fine if you're a junior, but if once you've gotten up to staff or senior level, that excuse holds a lot le- that holds a lot less water. And if there's other people who are doing better work than you, okay. Maybe these things you say are true, but I have these other people who can do the work. So it's it's tough to under or overestimate. If you're padding your stuff, it's bad. If you're trying to just give really low ball estimates because you want to make your manager happy, it's bad. So what is the TLDW, which is probably too late because I'm already at 15 minutes. Here's what I my my recommendation for you. You've been asked to do a task. Try to understand what that task is. Ask questions. Compare it to tasks you've done before. Understand it as much as you can before you return with an estimate. If when you do that, try to get big tasks broken down. If you have a month task, try to get it down to a daily. Sometimes you may even want to break it down to an hourly task, especially if it's something you've never done before. Try to get smaller tasks so you know early early on, are you going off? Either are you doing it faster or slower? If you're doing it faster, hey, maybe that's great. Or maybe you misunderstood what it was. If you're doing it slower, that's not good. And again, maybe you misunderstood what it was. So try to get that those tasks done in, in a much finer granularity. And then the last one, which should be obvious from everything I've just said, is communicate. Talk to your manager. Talk about delays. Or the rare, hey, I got ahead of things. I finished this in an hour and it was supposed to take all day. Maybe they can look at it and go, wow, you're awesome. Or maybe they look at it and go, this doesn't do half the stuff we talked about. Communication. It's tough. I get that a lot of people in the game industry are introverts. You're looking at one. But you have to learn to do it. Communication is two-way. So you can't just blame your manager for lack of communication. It's kind of on both of you. So, TLDW, understand the task, get it broken down as granular as possible, and then communicate with the person who gave you the task. That is the best advice I can give people on time estimation. So, I hope Aegon Targaryen 1390, this answered your questions.